Okay. The health care bill has passed. What's going to happen? What do we do now? Politically, we fight. We don't give up. Never give up. We can undermine this bill in numerous ways. Even without winning a majority in Congress or winning the presidency next, next time around, we can destroy this bill if we have the will to do so. First element of it would be lawsuits by states over the constitutional infringement by the federal government on the rights of the state. Supreme Court's a 50-50 deal roughly, so there's a chance that it might work. Another section is lawsuits based on the idea of the federal government mandating or requiring you to buy something against your will and fining you if you don't or jailing you if you don't. That can be followed through on. There are procedural tricks we can play, but they're, um, they're probably not going to be that effective. Now, what's going to happen to this country? Well, first off, there's been a lot of lies spread about this bill. This bill is designed to destroy the health, the insurance industry. I've outlined how they're going to do it. It's going to raise rates. It's impossible to increase the number of people insured and at the same time reduce rates if you're required to cover everyone's pre-existing conditions and if the fines are lower than the cost of the insurance the insurance costs are going to skyrocket to compensate for that and many businesses will stop providing insurance and instead just pay the fine and many individuals will not buy insurance and just pay the fine and they'll only get insurance when they need to get the money for these major operations and such. The end result is the insurances will collapse. Also, the, for the liberals out there who might be watching, the reason why this, this is a, such a big deal and why we keep on saying you're lying about how much it's going to cost, look at all the other entitlements you've installed. Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare. Medicaid and Medicare were supposed to handle all the poor medical bills they were but the government doesn't fully fund them doctors only are guaranteed a fraction of the money they get and that, and of all the insurance out there of the private and the and the, and the public Medicare and Medicaid Medicare and Medicaid deny more claims than any private industry does by almost twice as much this number is going to go higher because the government can't doesn't have all this money we're operating on credit cards my friend we're not operating on cash. We don't have a bank account where we've taken money out of. We have a credit card. That's it. And you can only operate on credit cards for so long. You only buy groceries on credit cards for so long before it just stops. And now your, your premiums and your, your payments are just too high for you to survive. Well, that's where we're going. We're not going to be able to do this. It's just impossible. I don't care what your good intentions are or what victims you trot out in front of the cameras. I don't care what union bosses are in place. There's some laws of physics you're going against here. And you like to say, well, look at Canada and look at Europe. Yeah, look at them. Three of the, sorry, four of the states of Europe are on the fringe of total collapse financially. The other ones are great, grossly in debt. And I include Canada on that list, my friends. We're already grossly in debt because of other spending we've done, other entitlements we've done. This is going to be far worse. And if you think you're going to be able to get all the operations you want and all the treatment you want, uh -uh, it's not going to happen. The government's going to regulate what you're going to get. There's going to be a board who's going to tell the companies what they can provide and what they can't, tell the doctors what they'll pay for and what they won't pay for. And the doctors are in it to make money. They need to make money to make a living. They didn't come in to be slaves. They're going to be regulated. They're already regulated in a way by private insurance because private insurance restricts what they're willing to pay for. It. But government's worse, far worse than private insurance on that matter. So you're going to spend the rest of your life arguing why the government should cover this operation or cover this treatment and cover that treatment and begging them to increase their coverage for different treatments 
And this is how we're going to live the rest of our lives, begging at the front door of government for these treatments. No longer can you go to other sources. You know, in this whole health debate, it came to my attention that there's actually three different aspects. You have the true believers in the single-payer health system who lie to the population about the purpose of this bill was, knowing full well that it's designed to destroy private health care so that they have to come in and save the day with, with, with one single-payer system. Then you have the useful fools who actually believe the lie by these Marxists, like Obama. Then you have the tools. These are people who think that they're going to benefit from a single-payer system, and they're going to go out there and they're going to play blocker for, the, for that system, for this trick. They know it's a trick. They know that it's going to destroy private health care. But they're going to pretend it isn't. And they're going to say, oh, no, they, he's really a moderate. Look, he didn't take a single-payer system. He's a moderate. Look. And then secretly, behind closed doors, they'll go, yeah, great, this is going to destroy them. They're liars. And why do they lie? You lie when you believe the truth will not be accepted and not be acceptable to the people hearing it. That's when you lie. They are lying to the American people. What does that tell you about this bill? About its intentions? We have to fight this. We have to fight it every step of the way. Even if we have to be martyrs and be sent to jail for it, we have to fight this. Because otherwise, we the people will become slaves, indentured servants to the Democrats and progressives in government. Much like the communists enslaved their population. Unless you want to sit in bread lines and sit in lines waiting for treatment for six or seven months and being begging for the treatment from the government and having to get lawyers to have the government provide treatment for you, you're in a hard place. Unless you're willing to travel to other countries, you're going to be to get your medical care like India um, or other places like that. You're going to be in a hard, rock in a hard place. This bill has to be has to be stopped. We have to act. And we have to act sooner than later. Forget all the niceness. They've demonstrated that they're willing to be cutthroat. They're willing to be vicious. They're willing to do backroom dealings and lie and hurt people and etc. We have to be more cutthroat. I'm sorry. I don't like it any more than you do, but we got to do it. There's no way we can save this situation if we do not be more active, more aggressive. You know, they're ignoring us in protest. We got to do something about this. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good day. Keep up the fight and fight for getting rid of these guys as soon as possible. I'm out.